What's up, people, and welcome to a another video. This one's more for fun than the uh, Ukrainian one that I did, and I normally don't do two videos back to back, so I'm probably going to upload this one later. But I want to do it while it's still fresh in my mind and still completely and utterly hilarious to me. Uh, so the White House, in their infinite wisdom, decided to put out a uh, public relations type video of Joe Biden visiting an American black family that happens to be a father and his two sons. And it is about as stereotypical as you would expect from Joe Biden and his team. It, <laughs> the video starts with a shot of him sitting at the dinner table with this man and eating fried chicken. I wish I was joking. I wish I was joking. But I'm not. And the purpose of this video is to discuss how Joe Biden uh, forgave this man's 150000 or 250000 however, $100,000 in student loan debt. And how grateful this man is that he did that. Which I would imagine that anybody would be grateful if you somehow managed to eliminate $125,000 plus debt. But that's neither here nor there. That's not the point of the, the video. It kind of is, but it's not. <laughs> My point is that these... <laughs> every single year, every election year, Democrats go after black voters hard fucking core. Joe Biden himself, before he got elected, said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. He said it. Word for word. Funny thing is that a lot of black voters are starting to realize that these people are making empty promises year after year after year to get the vote and then doing nothing once they get it. Plain and simple. Now, I am hoping, because according to the polls, more black voters are starting to shy away from that type of trap that they are putting out there. They're trying to draw people in, specifically minorities, not just blacks, Hispanics. Hell, in Texas, you have Beto, O'Rourke, O'Rourke, going around trying to secure the Hispanic vote by calling himself Beto. Motherfucker, just call yourself Robert. You're not Hispanic. Just stop. Stop doing that. Just stop. Please, for the love of God, more people would support you if you don't pretend to be something that you're not. Just saying. Ugh. Okay. So anyway, we're going to get into this video because it starts with Joe Biden sitting there at the table eating fried chicken or chicken tenders, whatever it is. It's chicken with this man. And he looks old. He sounds old. He moves like an old person. And as much as people want to cope and seethe, whenever anybody calls that fact out, it's true. You can see it with your own goddamn eyes. Right in front of you. When he talks, he kind of talks like this. That's how he talks. Except for the disastrous press release that he did the other day where he thought that the uh, president of Egypt was the president of Mexico. When he moves, he shuffles around like my grandpa. You know? It, it's just... The man looks old and tired. And to vote for four more years of that just because he wants to act like he's relating to the black community is insane. But... We're going to look at it. I'll let you I'll let you judge for yourself. Here we go. I hope you're ready. Uh, you I wasn't ready for this. Day, I think that one did. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Ms. Barlow, please excuse Carter for his absence today. But I needed his advice so we had lunch together. <laughs> huh? Here's your food, Mr. President. It's okay. a pleasure serving you. <laughs> All right, man. This is a very unique day. A very special day. 
Now, I want to get one thing clear. I'm not knocking this family for having lunch with the president. Not at all. Hell, if I could have lunch with Biden, I would have lunch with Biden. I mean, I'd tell him all the same shit I'm saying right now, but I would happily have lunch with Biden. I'm just saying. So don't try to think that I'm knocking these people because I would have done it too. We about to eat dinner with Joe Biden. That's fire. Like, the president is coming. Yes, Thank sir. you, man. Thank you, sir. Thank Keep you. your faith. Couldn't really believe that the president was coming to our house. Also, fun fact, that place where he's buying the food from, uh, I can't remember what they call it. Cookout? Takeout? Something. Something out. Apparently, their prices have increased by 28% since the last time Joe Biden was there. Wonder who, man, I don't know why. I'm just saying. That's well, uh, when I really say he moves like an old man. Come on, man. This is a pain in the neck for you. Uh, this is all great. So uh, what we would uh, like to do is just come into our, our space, our living area. All right. Uh, well, Carter, you, have, you want to show President Biden uh, one of your pictures up here? You want to share? Go over this side and show President Biden one of your favorite pictures on the wall. Well, one of my favorites is this one right here. Well, we were in oh, Jamaica. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I man, you got chicken fingers. You got, you got all the Chicken! Why? Why did you bring them chicken? Making sure did I Did they have ask for the chicken? So tell me about you guys. What you doing these days? Why don't you share about your passion of sports? I'm playing AAU basketball right now. Are you really? Are you guard? Yes, sir. Now, what grade are you in? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Right now, I'm just doing basketball, playing guard on the JV team for my school. How about the school? How are y'all doing in school? You should tell the president about the school. Favorite thing about it is the business academy I'm in. You get to like travel, so we've been to like NC State, uh, Wake Tech, and we. You're kidding me. Yeah, we went to this small dry cleaning business, and it's just it's cool. It's a great experience. Well, that's impressive. Is that a new program in school? Yes, sir. It is. It just started, just a couple of years ago. So what got you interested in teaching, administration? I'm sorry, I, I grew up in a rural South Carolina. My grandfather was very influential in showing me and teaching me that it would be good for an African-American male to be a teacher so that I could have influence, positive impact on the youth that we would be supporting in schools. And I started teaching in elementary school and uh, then became an assistant principal and then principal here in and Raleigh. Now, again, none of this is a slight against this family. In fact, props to old dude for raising two sons by himself. Hey, go for it. Again, not at all anything about them. Because, just like any other family, I don't care if you're black, brown, yellow, white, green, blue, purple, whatever. We all want the same thing, right? Everybody wants their kids to grow up happy, healthy. Everybody wants to be able to make a living wage and survive, right? Everybody wants the American dream. Everybody wants a house, which that's a hell of a lot fucking harder to, to achieve now than it ever was. But that's that's a different video. You know, what you're looking at here is what people want. In this still frame right here, that is what people want. You have your family, you have your house, you know, that's what people want. And I'd say that there are less people getting it at this point. Now, I'm not going to watch this whole video because it's basically the same thing. It's, it's, it's what they do every year where they try to secure the black vote by saying that, oh, we care about African-Americans and minorities and everybody else. But when they're under the gun, when it comes down to it, when it's, you know, when the season's over and they already won, then what? Right? And the point of this video was to talk about how he relieved this man's student debt, you know, eliminated it. But what about everybody else and their student loans? Their student debt, right? Wasn't that one of the promises? Oh, we're going to nuke everybody's student debt? And apparently this guy got lucky. Uh, I don't know about the other people. But, you know, it's the same song and dance every single election year. And when I say it gets old, 
it gets old. And that man is getting old. Now, happily, I happen to live in the United States of America where I'm allowed to make a video like this. Whereas there are other countries where if I even dared to do this, I would be black fanned and you people would never see me again. But I am fortunately living in a country where I can criticize my president because I don't think this man has four more years left in him. He just doesn't. And I know that there were a lot of people getting mad because I think Kamala came out and said, oh, I'm ready to take over if I have to. That's not the point. The point is you want to vote for somebody based on policy. You want to vote on somebody based on longevity. You want to vote for somebody based on mental acuity. You don't want to vote for somebody, and this is why it pisses me off when you have these blue and on vote blue no matter who assholes sitting there and just gaslighting people saying, oh, Biden has done a lot of good. He's done. In fact, he's the best president we've ever had. He's the greatest president we've ever had. Never. No mistakes. No nothing. We need him 18 more years. It's a lie. Me, myself, the prior administration with Trump, I wouldn't even say that Trump is the greatest president that ever lived. And these people will sit there all day long huffing paint telling you that Biden is like the American savior. And it, it's just, it's mind boggling, right? But yeah, I'm, I'm genuinely hoping that people are starting to realize that these publicity stunts, which is exactly what it is, are just that. They're just stunts. They're just empty promises. It's showing you something that you want and that you really, really want, but they're not going to give to you. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, please use common sense. Please.